Okay. Oh, Candice has joined us. Hi, Candice. Yeah. Hi, Candice. Yeah, I invited everybody. <laughs> oh, Valerie, this is your part. So we, we a little, little longer. <laughs> I get the I get the I get the uh, housekeeping. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Rules of the road. Um, so if you've never been here before, or if it's been a long time, we'd love for you to share your successes. Um, we will leave leave time for that throughout. Um, Dawn usually stops and asks questions of folks or see, make sure everybody, you know, is following along. If you could just make sure your line is muted when you're not sharing, that would be great. I think everybody is muted, but if you uh, share, you know, anytime you can mute your line, that's great. Ask, ask for help, tips, and advice. We would love for you to participate in whatever way you feel comfortable if you have a question, ask it. You can ask it in the chat. I see that. Let's see. Candace said hi. So that is where um, that's where we chat. You can always ask questions there. If you can't unmute your line, uh, contribute to the conversation, suggest topics for discussion. We often will have folks email us through support and ask us to cover so and so thing. And mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the result of uh, hey, what's going to happen from that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So that's that. That's that slide. You guys can all access the private portal. You go to homecaremarketingmastermind.com. Be sure to add in the www, which I think has resolved itself, but don't test it. Just don't frustrate yourself. <laughs> www.homecaremarketingmastermind.com. Use your email address. The email addresses that we send the reminders to is the email address that we have for you. And that's how you're enrolled. And then whatever was emailed to you it was, is your password. However, if you've forgotten that or that's long gone or you don't even remember seeing that, go ahead and just hit the forgot your password feature and it will let you reset your own password. And if that doesn't work, reach out to us at support and we will absolutely help you with that. All right. So as Valerie said, somebody had requested um, this for today and we'd love, love, love your feedback. We love to get requests from people. Um, it just... You know, we, we've we done a lot in home care and a lot in digital marketing for years and years. And sometimes we just, you know, we have we thought we already talked about that or we need to dig deeper into something because that's what you guys need. And we're here, we're aim, we're here to aim to please. So um, to, they had asked, you know, <laughs> you, per, you know, make a flow chart from prospect to client. So someone calls in, you know, they're talking about their mom, their dad, and what what do you do from that point all the way to where they become a client? So that is what we're going to cover today. We're going to dive deep into every step in the process. Lisa and I got it narrowed down to 10, <laughs> 10 steps. Um, and we're deep diving into each step as we go through. And we did create some additional October handouts as well. So we will also go through those. Um, so let's get started. All right. So here is the flow chart. And we tried to make it really look organized and clean. And we could have really put a lot more words on here. But the point of a flow chart is it's an right. aerial view, right? It's the high level aerial view of what your plan and what, what each step is. And that is why we're going to deep dive into each step. So high level, you welcome. You have the intake, the assessment, the plan of care, the start of care. So, you know, someone has called. Maybe you got a website lead, the call intake phone call. The second thing is the assessment, then the POC info, sign the client, send your summary to the scheduling department. Number five, client and plan of care gets entered into the system. You're looking now for a caregiver, number six. Number seven, plan of care review with the caregiver. Number eight, caregiver and schedule review with client. Nine, start of care, and 10, check in with the caregiver and the client and the family. And that all sounds really simple and easy. And it is great to have an overview, mm -hmm. right? But, you know, we, do, we should dig in and, and let's just talk about each part of this. So step one, that lead comes in via a call or email. Please always, always, always take your calls live if you can. I know sometimes you can't, but this is key. When somebody has, even if a social worker has given them three names, because sometimes the, so that's the rule of the facility. You got to refer three home care companies. You can't just do one. If they've done that, you know, if you do a great job and you're the first person they called and you took the call live, there's a good chance you're going to schedule them and they're just going to quit calling other people. Really good chance. So answering your call live is going to be really important. 
And, and I just want to say this too, because I've seen this happen and I know Lisa's had it happen too. If your phone number on your website, your Google profile listing and on your business card is your cell phone number, be sure your voicemail is not full. Oh my gosh. Sure we've had it happen <laughs> a lot because we call you guys, we call you guys and we have clients whose voicemails are full. Uh, be sure your voicemail is set up. It's great that you're having that be your, you know, then you can answer live that it's your cell phone. That's all good and wonderful when you're out running around. But if your voicemail's full or you haven't set up your voicemail, that's just a huge frustration for people. And so be sure you're looking at that as well. So take the calls live. Very important. Um, number two, when the lead comes in via email, regardless of when it comes in, I know like agingcare.com, caring.com, that lead might come in at two o'clock on a Sunday. And you're thinking, well, I don't want to bother them. There's a good chance they just filled out this lead form. And that's why you're getting it at two o'clock on a Sunday. Want to catch them while they're in the mode of home care and they're thinking about mom and dad, call them at two o'clock on Sunday. Go ahead and do it. I mean, if it's like three in the morning, obviously don't do it. But if it's a reasonable part of the day and it's a Sunday, you're calling on a Sunday is a very good chance that you're going to reach them and be maybe the only person that calls them. Call if you don't reach them, leave a voicemail, text them and email them. If you do not reach them, follow up with a text and email immediately right now. And, and that you will figure out very quickly what is their preferred mode of communication. Most of the time it's text. I have found that it's text, even with those adult children. Especially with the adult children. I, I remember just texting back and forth like, okay, mom wants this. This is like, okay, cool. <laughs> this is way easier. Yeah. Um, so it looks like Paulette's out. Is step two an RN assessment or is this the marketer going out? Um, so step two, we'll we'll get to that. That is. It depends. It is the marketer if your marketer is signing the job. It's your nurse if your nurse is the one doing it. So it's whoever or your, or your client or your care client care manager. So we'll dig into that. But typically, it's yes, yeah, that is going to be whoever goes out and creates the plan of care. Okay, so when you're on the phone with them via text and even email, place yourself as an expert, even in the text, even in the email. You don't want your text to be super long. Um, but while you're on the phone with them, you know, you can talk about typically in this situation. That's a great way. Using the word typically is a great way for them to understand this isn't your first rodeo. You've been through this a hundred times. Um, the text and email, you can, if you've been around a long time in your text, you can say we've been providing home care for 10 years. That's a way to, to let them understand because you haven't had a conversation with them yet. But there, that's something that you can throw into your text. You know, I've been doing this for 10 years. I'm a great, I used to always say, I am a great resource for families when they're in this situation that helps them to understand, oh, she might be somebody I actually want to call back if she's a resource. I know she's been through this. She understands it. So place yourself as an expert while you're on the phone with them. Even if you're leaving a voicemail, text, email, there are ways to do that so that they want to call you back. You're a resource. That's going to be a really good way to get them to call you back. While you're on the phone with them, connect with them emotionally. Again, this could be your hundredth service. I call it a service inquiry intake call. We call it all kinds of things. You, It's their first time, typically. It's the first time they've been through this. So you need to, it's traumatic. Their mom, who took care of them their whole life, needs is now needing their help. They just don't even know how to navigate. So connecting with them emotionally is going to help a lot. If they call, my mom fell and broke her hip. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. That can be really hard. You know, has she been injured before? Is this the first time she's been through something like this? I know how traumatic this is for the family. Just connect with them emotionally so they understand that you have a heart. This is a heart business, a caring business. They need to see that come through the phone, come through the text if you're texting back and forth. It comes through the email. The social worker needs to see that part of you as well. Be sure to get the client's name. So usually you're talking to the adult child. I can't in the beginning when I very first started, I would be talking to the adult child and I'd get to the client's home and I'm like, I don't know their name. <laughs> I don't know the client's name. Um, so, and if she said mother-in-law, I could usually go Mrs., you know, because I knew the last name, but get the name. It's important. It's important to them that you want to know their mother's name, their mother-in-law's name, get the name. Your only goal while on a service inquiry is to get that assessment booked. That is the biggest goal here. Don't get into the everything while you're on the phone. I even try to avoid giving prices over the phone. You know, we need to, we need, I will, I, I keep continuing to bring them back to the assessment. They say, 
You know, can you do bathing? Yes, we'll discuss that at the assessment. You know, well, what is your pricing? You know, I is it thirty dollars an hour, thirty five? Well, I really need to see your mom and and see the home and and understand completely what's needed. We'll cover that at the assessment. If they push you for pricing, give them a range. I never give them a flat, straight up. It's thirty bucks an hour because the person they talk to in five minutes, it might be twenty nine an hour, or they may have given them a range twenty nine to thirty five. And they're thinking you're more, you're more expensive because you didn't say 29. So I, if they push, and I know some push for pricing, I will give them a range. Um, so get the assessment book. That's the most important thing. They're having a lot of questions. You know, usually when I sit down with you and your family, we will get all of these questions answered. I know that this is new for you and you're nervous. You know, if they really push you to answer some questions, of course you're going to. But try to continue to say when we're at the assessment, when we're at the assessment. I do try to find out who's going to be at the assessment as well, because I've walked into an assessment and there's 10 people in the house, in the living room, and we're sitting in a big circle and it's intimidating. It's overwhelming. It's like, totally. wow, like (laughs) what is happening? You know, like everybody is there, you know, and they have tea and cookies, like it's crazy. So you want to be prepared for that. And I didn't have enough brochures when that's happened. It's happened a couple of times to me. I didn't have... 10 brochures in my car to give everybody something. So try to find out who's going to be there. Um, And then if there is Alzheimer's, dementia, memory issues involved, try to get as much of that information you can over the phone. It's really uncomfortable to sit in a room with a client with dementia and Alzheimer's and try to ask these questions. And I didn't think I'm telling you all the things I messed up with. So, you know, right. (laughs) That's where right. I'm coming from. I've been in a room with someone who has Alzheimer's who's sitting across the room who seems very lucid. And I'm afraid to say, does she wander? Because she's sitting there, you know, like, do we need to be in the same room? So just if there is Alzheimer's dementia involved, get as much information as you can before you're sitting in front of this person. Because even though right. we, you know, we don't know if they understand what we're saying or they do understand, it's it's just uncomfortable. They're sitting there, you know, do you wonder? You can't ask them that question. And it's a very uncomfortable <laughs> situation. So if there's all kinds of tension involved, they, just go ahead, Lisa. <laughs> sorry, they're they're going to be like, no, I don't wonder. No. And then they're going to be like, what are you talking about? Who, what did they tell you about me? I've had them say that too. What did she say? Why are you asking if I, you know, what I like to eat? I cook for myself. Right. You're thinking, oh no, you can't, you can't. They don't. They don't. So get as much info as you can about Alzheimer's dementia before you're sitting in front of the person with the Alzheimer's or dementia. Do we have any questions? Anything? Yeah, we have um, Abraham with Amelia Home Care. He wanted to touch on placing yourself as an expert. Okay. Um, So while you're on the phone or in conversation with them, it's easier to do it then. Um, It's just, talking about your experience, you know? So if they say they have a hip or a hip, a fall, they broke their hip. Oh, in that situation, that can be really challenging. She will probably go home with home health PT. Just the things that you know about that, that they wouldn't know. Anything you can say that you're telling them something that they don't under, that they don't know yet. Oh, she's in skilled right. nursing or she's in the hospital. She will probably discharge to skilled nursing before going home. Have they talked to you about that yet? What hospital is she in? You know, and even, you know, I can, if you're comfortable, I can call the social work. I don't know if you want to do this while you're just on the phone with them, but during the assessment, you might even be doing the assessment in the hospital. If you feel like they're leaning into you being the expert, oh, I didn't know that. I'm so glad I called you. You know, I didn't know she'd be going to a sniff too. Like I thought she'd go home from the hospital. Sometimes they do go home from the hospital and you tell them there's never an absolute, this is how it's going to go down. But typically she's going to go to the sniff. And then, you know, if you're really involved in all of this, have you, I know of the sniffs that are really great in your area and you should know, you should know the great sniffs in your area. You absolutely should. Who does PTOT really well? Who has PTOT, a sniff that also does home health PTOT, where that person, they have that same person, maybe go home with them to continue the PTOT. So you can you can be that resource that they're looking for. Recommend a sniff for them. You know, they're gonna, she's probably gonna be going to a sniff. Do you want me to call the social worker at the hospital, the case manager on your behalf? Or here are some sniffs that I've, you know, I've had other patients 
go-to for rehab or they did really well with a hip replacement at this sniff. So it's being that resource. It's talking about the things that you know are coming that they have no idea are coming. You don't want to sound like a know-it-all, but they really will lean into that and they really will trust you and they will schedule with you and they will not talk to anybody else because what would be the point? What would be the point of talking to anybody else if you know all of those things? So I hope that did, I hope that answered the question. Did you have did you have anything else to touch on, Abraham? I know you you wanted to add to that. I'm just gonna add something. <laughs> As an expert, and when you're talking about being an expert, I would advise people to learn about different things that go on this in their state in regards to Medicaid spend downs, understand what a income pool trust and, and a, being an expert is maybe advising people how they can save money, not paying out of pocket or you know spending their lifetime savings on home care because there's opportunities with Medicaid in, in whatever the state they are, they have to learn the system there where you can do a spend out and qualify for Medicaid and get 5,000 worth of services and paying only Medicaid about 500 a month. Then there's income pool trust where you can uh, park your assets in an income pool trust and basically qualify for Medicaid. And again, get five, six, seven, eight, 7,000 worth of services for absolutely you know nothing. So I would, being an expert and really closing the sale is having, giving people the ability to, you know, or uh, thought of how they can save money, not only saying we have great aids and we can do great service, but, you know, showing somebody how they can, you know, save five, six, seven thousand a month on home care by qualifying for, uh, you know, the state local Medicaid. And that's very reasonable because I do it, you know, uh, every day, you know, Every month, I've qualified probably over ten people that were paying out of pocket for uh, for home care, and now they're paying five, four, five hundred a month, and they're getting five, six thousand a month of services for free. That's great. That's, that's that. incredible. Yeah, good for you. That's that's wonderful. So, and it's and great that you're able to help them get approved or guide them through that process. Too. Absolutely, it's all online. It's just you got to go to the state. You know, go to this. You know, read about the state Medicaid policies. You know, uh, go to some attorney's websites to look at the, you know, pool trust and how they work. And uh, it's it's quite simple. And, you know, a lot of people don't even realize it exists. And that's when you can really get the client and get his attention. And if the two or three other agencies are calling him, guess what? He's going to listen to you because you're actually telling him how to save money. For sure. That's a great. Everybody wants to save money. So that's (laughs) that's my my input. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Great advice. Okay, so step two, you're at the assessment. The person that's going to do the assessment, this that is what we're talking about here in step two. So it could be if it's home health, it could be a nurse. It could be a nurse if it's non-medical too. It could be your, your client care manager. It could be your marketer. Um, I've seen all different, mostly what Lisa has seen, we talked about this the other day, is the client care manager doing this. In my experience, it's been the marketing person, um, mostly because most of my referrals came from SNFs and that SNF wanted the marketer who they've been working with side by side, day in and day out to be the one to spend time with that family and to be the one to sign them up for care. So, and some people do both. It's the marketer. If it's at the SNF, they send the marketer to do the the, the signing of the client in the SNF because the social worker is going to witness that. So some people bounce, you know, they have different people that can go and do that. So it'll be really important that you're prepared and you review your notes from the call, the intake call, the email, whatever it was that you've done, and just be mentally back in that place before you walk in the door and bring everything you need. Bring brochures, bring your business cards, bring anything else that you're going to need to leave behind, anything you need to sign the client up. I've always said park a house or two away. Do not park in their driveway. Even in front of their house, they will come out. So Because I, I get there early, right? I get there okay. marketing and I'm running and I get there early and I'm like, okay, I'll sit in front of the house. I've got 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And I'm going to gather my thoughts. I'm going to go back to where I was when I talked to them on the phone. I'm going to review the notes. And you know what? They will come out and get you. <laughs> they will, sure, they sure they, will. They come out and get you. And then all that planning that you were going to do and get, and you don't want them to see your car and either like that you're out there getting brochures and things have moved from one side of the car to the other. Maybe you're a little unorganized. It's, it's been a rough week. You don't want them to see all of that. So park a few homes, a few homes down. I never park in their driveway. I've also trained the caregivers never. to park in their driveway. We've had oil leaks in a driveway and seniors get really yep. fussy 
fussy about having little drips of oil on their driveway. So don't park in the driveway if you don't have to. I know out here in Sun Lakes, you're not allowed to be on the street in a 24 hour period. Cars are not allowed to be, you will get a ticket. So in that instance, we have to do something else. But most of the time you can park down the street when you're signing them up for sure. You don't want to be in front of their home. Um, I always say dress business casual. You don't need to be in a suit tie. That's just uncomfortable, not caring, not loving. But business casual is good. You don't want to be there in like yoga clothes. But scrubs tend to be okay because it's, you know, it's medical, non-medical. Scrubs are okay. But I would say business casual or scrubs. Lisa, would you agree with that? Because we didn't talk about that. Yes. Uh, I always made sure that the caregivers had scrubs on and I was always very um, businessy or business casual. I usually wore, a, a, you know, a nice blazer with whatever yeah. I had on. Yeah. Right. And I a blazer can, a blazer can like spruce up anything up, right? Bit, so. But not too much, like not stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I usually didn't wear scrubs because I wasn't hands-on ever, but a nurse would be in scrubs. I mean, that would make sense. I think it would make sense I don't think that would be weird for them that you would show up in scrubs. Um, So when you walk in, you want to read the room. I can usually tell right away who's for home care and who's against home care. And it's mostly the senior that's against it. I mean, let's just, we all know that. But there's also sometimes a son that's against it or a daughter that's against it. And you can feel it when you walk in the room. You go through, you welcome, you greet yourself, greet everybody in the room, and you can just sense it. And the people who are not for home care, you're going to have to spend a little more time and try to figure out what it is about the home care that they're not liking. And, and, and they'll tell you, I mean, you don't have to come straight out and ask them, but it will come out. Pay extra attention to what they're saying and, and their mm-hmm. feedback to you and their questions, because that's the objections you're going to have to over overcome because everyone in that room has to come in agreement that yes, this is a good idea. Um, So greet everyone in the room, including the client, even if they're bed bound and seemingly unaware that you're there, I always still would greet them. I would still talk to them in the very beginning, especially. And the adult child would say, oh, she can't hear you. She, you know, she's out of it, whatever. I would still make a point to, I just think it's respectful to do that. Um, Ask permission to sit. Where would you like for me to sit while I gather information? Review the intake call that you had. So we talked on the phone yesterday. This is this is what you told me. Uh, reestablish yourself as an expert somehow in that conversation. If you don't know yet what's happened to prompt them reaching out to you, it's a good idea to get that information at the intake. But bring that up again. If they fell in the shower, if they, you know, anything could have happened, whatever that was, some, if something did happen, bring that up again. We're going to prevent that from happening in the future. And so I try to lay down the foundation of this not being a temporary thing. In some situations, maybe it is, but I really do work on, you know, oh, you fell in the shower. Well, well we're not going to let that happen again. You know, we're going to get you back up on your feet and strong, and then you'll have somebody here for future showers so that doesn't happen again. Because I know that jobs aren't lasting as long as they used to. I hear that from a lot of our clients. I saw that personally too. You have to set that st- that stage here it, during the assessment that this is not a one and done. Um, are there any questions? We're good? I don't, I don't see any questions? right now. Okay. All right. So um, that is during the assess. That's part, you know, part of the assessment. So now we're going to get into the plan of care information, and we've we've done a deep dive into what do you need to get during a plan of care, what information, what should you do. That was a, a mastermind. I don't know, a month or two ago, maybe Lisa Valerie. Yeah, like yeah. So you can find that in the mastermind portal. We went step by step everything you need to do to get a good plan of care, a plan of care that's going to be successful, keep the job, make everybody happy. So if you weren't there for that one, please go back and review it. So gather the information needed for the plan of care by asking questions. And if there's personal care needed, if there is bathing needed, you need to get up and go look at the bathroom. And I know that's very uncomfortable. You're in somebody's house. I, this isn't the first question I ask. I ask all kinds of other questions to kind of relax everybody in the room, get everybody talking, get everybody comfortable. And then if there's personal care transfers, I leave that towards more of the middle 
where everybody is comfortable because I'm going to get up. I'm going to get up and I'm going to walk into their bathroom in their house. It, it, it's uncomfortable. So, and you need to ask permission. Okay. So we're going to be doing bathing. What bathroom will we be using? Do you mind if I go take a look at it? I need to make sure it's going to be a safe environment for your mom, your dad, for you and go look at the bathroom. And we went into the, all the things to look at in the bathroom while you're in there. One, if there's a wheelchair involved, does it fit through the bathroom door to go to the restroom and shower? You have to look at all these things. And if you have anything in your mind, like this isn't making sense. Like if you're writing things down on the intake sheet and you're saying wheelchair, Hoyer, but then we're showering, your scheduling team's going to be like, well, how's the shower happening? <laughs> There's something missing here. So you need to be thinking about that. Someone has to take this intake sheet and schedule the caregiver and make this work. And so it all needs to make sense. You know, you can't have a wheelchair or hoyer and a shower, but maybe you can. Maybe there's a situation in which that that works. Right. In this case, you need to say that on the intake sheet. So if it's a walk-in shower or mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> is there a lip on the shower that we have to get over? Or is that physically possible with this person? Um, if we're helping them transfer, you need to witness this transfer. You know, because families don't always get it right. Oh, she's so heavy. She doesn't help at all. It's going right. to change. You know, someone's really going to have to know what they're doing. And then you do the transfer. It's like so easy. Or they say, oh, no, she does pretty good all by herself. I'm just a little bit of help. And then you go to transfer and it's almost a two-person transfer. So you have to witness it because it's just going to fall apart when that caregiver gets there. You've got to get the right person in that home. And you're not going to know if it's the right person if you don't witness the transfer. You don't go look at the bathroom. You don't take a look at the Hoyer or whatever other equipment might be involved. So really important to do all that. And again, go back to the POC one. We really dug in deep with that. Um, recommend hours needed per week. They are most people. Some people do like to be in control. And this is what we're, how much is it per, per hour? Oh, well, we can do five hours. I mean, some of them are like that. But most of them are looking to you to tell them how many hours. And if you give them too many suggestions, it's confusing for them. So you should have from the intake call some idea of what the hours might be and somewhat through the assessment, you know, and, and you can ask questions about that. Like if they're with a walk, they're, they've got a walker and there's garbage that has to be taken out to the curb. Okay, well, who's doing that? How is the garbage getting, to, you know, so that's that could be like how many days you need to be there based on the trash based on how often they shower a week. There's lots of reasons to that that will lead you to how many hours they need a week, but they are usually looking. And I usually say, typically in this situation, I would recommend 15 hours a week, or I would recommend whatever it is. Um, they are looking for you to be that expert. And this is the reason why, or, you know, I would start with 12 hour days and we can taper down as your mom is getting stronger. Or maybe she needs 24s. And if we do a couple 24s and she's great, doing great at night, we'll switch to 12 hour days. So, you know, let them know it's not set in stone, but this is what you would recommend. And we can taper down if needed down the road. Um, set clear expectations of what to expect and who they are communicating moving forward. Um, and also be honest about the caregivers. You know, I don't get into no call, no shows. I don't get into all of that. But a lot of them are like, well, if I'm doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I want the care the same caregiver. Or I'm doing Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, I want the same care caregiver. And you have to be honest with them. You know, weekday caregivers don't usually work weekends. Daytime caregivers usually don't work overnights. So you're going to have a few caregivers. And that's good because we have backups if somebody gets sick or somebody needs to be out for vacation. So setting those clear expectations is important. Also letting them know what's the next step, what's going to happen next. Who's, who's coming to my house next? Who, who am I going to be talking to next? What's happening next? And then ask for the business. Would you like to start Tuesday or Thursday of next week? You, you do need to ask them that. Uh, we do have this assessment form. We had this in the POC too. If you guys are, you don't have to use this, but I found this to be a great tool. I mean, a lot of people are doing things on, you know, on a laptop and that's great. But this, this is a great tool because you can be engaging with them, talking to them, and just check mark the areas, you know, this is talking about mobility, continence, transfers, mental alert, status. Um, and you can just check mark what, what applies to them. So this is here for you. It'll be in the slides. Whoops, did I go to the wrong place? I did. Here we go. It'll be in the slides um, when Valerie sends them. So it's there. It's a live document that you can make changes to. 
If this job is starting fairly soon, you're going to want to send a summary of the job to your scheduling team so they can start looking for that caregiver. If it's starting within 48 hours, I would do this because you need them to have as much information as they can to at least start looking for somebody. And this is the meat and potatoes of what they need to start looking for somebody. Client name, emergency contact, who's allowed to change the schedule? Are they male or female? What is their mobility? Are you doing personal care transfers? Where are they located? Are they a smoker? Do they have pets? If they have pets, find out which, because some people will go if there's a small dog, but they're terrified of big dogs. Some people will go if it's one cat, but if there's more than one cat, they're not coming. So, you know, you're going to have to get some detail about that because there are people that just won't do it. Um, the hours, the days, is there transportation needed? Because we're going to really drive the carryover car, the client car. Is there another company in the home, home hospice or home health? A quick situation, just a quick summary, lives with so-and-so, this is what they need, this is what happened, this is what I suggested. Um, and special notes, no perfume. Some of them will say no heavy accent because they're hard of hearing, and so heavy accent makes it difficult. Right. So give them some of those, those details too. This should be enough for them to get started looking for the caregiver. I usually did this in the car. Another reason why you park down the street, because yeah. I would down and I would get all of this together. I just met with so-and-so. I have another assessment. I will get the intake into the system as soon as I can, but here you go. You can get started with this. That's how we did it. That's how Lisa yep. did it. Her and I, yep. we, always, we always like compare notes and we're almost <laughs> all I even sometimes already had a caregiver in mind. I'd be like, look, is such and such mm -hmm. available? Because I think they would be a perfect match. Mm -hmm. you or know? I would say, who took care of Miss Smith on this in Sun Lakes? Who was it? Who was it? And then they'll right. tell me, oh, they would love her. They would love her. She's yes. this, just like Mrs. Smith. It's almost the same identical situation. If that caregiver can come, that'd be perfect. Okay, now you're going to enter the client and the plan of care into the system. The marketer in my, wherever I've worked, that was whoever designed the job, it was their job to enter all the information into the system. I've seen it done different ways in different companies. The reason we did it this way is because the detail, when this moves from one person to another, you're going to, some pieces are going to drop off. So it, it seems it's always worked best where in my instances that whoever signed that client is also going to enter everything into the system. The problem with that, if it's your marketer, is they're out marketing, they're out signing other clients, and it might be 10, 8 o'clock at night tomorrow morning before this gets in. That's why you send the summary ahead of time so that they can start looking. So review the intake sheet again as if you did not conduct the assessment. Does it all make sense? Are you missing anything? Would you be able to staff this client with the information that you're putting into the system, the information on the intake sheet? Enter all the information from the intake sheet into your scheduling system. Be sure to add all pertinent information the caregiver will need to know. If you got there, if it's in an assisted living building and it took you 10 minutes to get your temperature checked, to get a badge, to sign in, all the things, it's going to take the caregiver 10 minutes too. If you had trouble because there's road blockage and you can't come in the parking lot or into their home the way you're that, that you thought you were going to, it took extra time. The caregiver needs to know that because they're also going to, to run into that. And you may have prepared and planned 20 minutes early for yourself. The caregiver usually doesn't do that. So if they're going to need an extra 20 minutes to check in, tell them that. They need to know that so they're not late. Um, let's see. Also, your company need to know information like this client is a hoarder may need to be somewhere where the caregivers can't see it. I, I know they need to know. I would verbally tell them this over the phone, but I would not put it in a place that they can see it because they're going to tell the client that you called them a hoarder. I've had this happen three times now. Three times they've said to the client, oh, my whoever came out here thinks you're a hoarder. So, you right. know, and then I get a call from the client. Oh, so you think I'm a hoarder. So you have to tell, <laughs> you have to tell the caregiver, but don't put it in writing for the caregiver if it's something like that, because they will share it with the client. So just keep that in mind. Um, yeah. Be sure to be thorough and accurate with all information. There should be an area in every client's profile for the important stuff. What is the deal breaker? What is the one thing we must do right to keep this client um, HIPAA information should probably be listed there unless you have a place for HIPAA in your in your system. And who's the point of contact? If you're if you're taking care of somebody's mother who has dementia, who is forgetful, who doesn't want the care, that mother should then not also be able to call your company and say, I don't need a caregiver today. We also <laughs> should be calling her and saying, Your caregiver called out sick. Do you need a replacement? Because she's gonna say no. 
So point of contact, super important. Know your audience. Know your audience. Exactly. (laughs) Know your audience. Okay, Lisa, I took a little longer than I wanted to because we still have handouts, but you're up. Okay, I'll I'll be quick here. Okay, the caregiver (laughs) search. So client care or sales is now past the new shift onto your staffing coordinator or staffing manager. Um, My experience, it was time to blast that email and start making phone calls. We have got a shift to fill. Uh, send, you know, first thing, send a shift blast to your caregivers and then you need to chase them, call them. Sending a blast is not enough. You need to call them. You need to text them. You need to email them. You need to get a hold of them. Um, uh, and then call, call your tried and true few, your go-to caregivers. Um, you know, you know who they are. Those are the people that you work with all the time. Compare current schedules, availability, abilities, needs, base rate, deal breakers. And sometimes you may need to do some serious convincing, <laughs> which well, I think we've all been in that in that seat as well. Put into the salesperson. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Disclose what you know about the client, about the family, about the shifts, uh, uh, the plan of care, and then sell the job. So once you've done all that, you received a, quite a few replies, and now you need to put this all together. So you contact the caregivers you feel most likely to be the best fit for that particular client, and you get them scheduled. Talk about ongoing shifts, whatever it is, you get them scheduled. Um, I, we did have a comment. Somebody said they gather information during the visit, and the assessment by our RN is done within 48 hours of the start of care because they don't want to send the RN out there if they don't get the job. Because it's, you know, they're expensive and RN is oh, more expensive. Yeah. So that, that's a good tip. Thank you for that. Very good yeah, tip. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> uh, plan of care review with the caregiver. So the caregivers have accepted ongoing shifts based on what we told them about the plan of care initially. That was just a summary. Now we need to walk through the details uh the setting our caregivers up for success that's that's so so important i've worked many places where they didn't have the information until i got there and i was like i'm writing a book <laughs> because i want them to know every little thing possible down to how that person likes their sandwich cut mm-hmm. um you know, so the, the plan of care lives in the client file some agencies have a client binder still in the home um and then some others use an app that can be pulled up you know easily on a smartphone to reference um, always let the caregivers know if you do have a binder that they have to remember that everyone can see this, including family members. And so they need to just write details, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. And then anything else they want to say, they can call the office and we can update, you know, and they should be calling the office anyways, if there's things like this person yells or this person cusses me out or this person throws remotes at my head, you know, <laughs> <laughs> things like that. We need to definitely know. Um, plan of care should be available to the caregiver to review and reference at all times in case they forget anything for new caregivers. I mean, this, this is like their Bible, so to speak. All the important details collected from every conversation are in the plan of care. The notes you took during the intake before the assessment and then the initial inquiry and then details noted. Hold on, I have stuff in my way. During the assessment, it's all fuel to write the perfect plan of care and for your caregiver success and to keep that client as a client. After explaining the plan of care, always ask if there are any questions, if they want to touch on anything. Some helpful hints, take video or photos of any hard to describe layouts or instructions on how to get inside a facility. Dawn, you had just touched on that. I've done video inside a facility that also had inside that facility, another piece to the puzzle. And I had to, I had to video it because I felt that that was the easiest way to you know, show the caregiver how to get in with no, you know, they wouldn't be late, all of that. So setting them up for success again. Um, where a secret med box is kept, things like that. Take a picture or let your caregiver know, you know, this is something that that person with dementia cannot see because they will go through the pillbox and who knows what they'll do. Um, you know, print out a copy or paste healthy recipes, easy exercises, game ideas, or anything that might be helpful in engaging the client while on shift. Um, okay. Caregiver and schedule review with the client. So the client and or client family needs a recap of what happened since they signed up for care with you. They need to know you have a caregiver in mind and they're ready to begin. They need to know that you have carefully walked through every single detail of the care plan and that you'll be present on day one with the caregiver for an intro and a quick walkthrough. The walkthrough is for safety and to give a visual on top of that detailed care plan that you've already gone over together. Client and or family 
client family should know the caregivers' names. So if there's multiple caregivers, they need to know all the names, but especially that person that you're showing up with that day. Shift details, what days and times did that caregiver take that this person that you're coming with or each caregiver, what, what their schedule looks like and a brief background, some strong points and something nice about the caregiver. Um, and, and recap a few of the duties, especially the things that were any, any deal breakers, you know, like, oh yes, caregiver Kathy, she is excellent at getting, you know, dementia clients, patients to engage in memory games, memory, you know, something like that something that that touches them and that will keep them you know with you and understanding that you understand what they're looking for helpful hint if a caregiver's not been with you long but in the industry try to steer away from this type of conversation instead mention what you know she is capable of i hoyer trained her myself they trust you yeah you know they they trust your experience so if i trained them wow she must be awesome and they might not even think about oh how long has she been with the company they'll probably ask the caregiver anyways and yeah. She'll tell them, but <laughs> but you kind of steered clear from that, and they gave her a chance, and they love her, right? right. They give her, a and chance. if you know, yeah. Mm-hmm. What would they? <laughs> if they give her a chance, usually that's all it takes, right? Exactly. Like she started, she this is her first job with us. Oh, so that usually they're like, oh no, I want someone more experienced, and then they start getting into all these details that they don't need, but they think they do because they believe the hype that they hear, right? But yes. they don't need all that. Yeah. I wanted to you know. Just, oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> what were you saying? I was just going to add something with the caregiver names. Don't put last names on badges. Don't give them last names. It's not their business. Um, they'll look them up on Facebook and Instagram. Right. The place do not get, and it's a privacy thing. They don't need to know the caregiver's last name. We did first name, last initial. And that's it. That's a great, great, yes, great tip. Great tip for sure. Um, and if you know and love working with this caregiver, let them know that too. They tr- trust you this far and your stamp of approval means a lot. Yes. Good. <clears throat> the start of care. The client care or sales and marketing person that signed the client should arrive at the start of care with the caregiver. Um, I always liked to do this myself if it was someone that I signed. Um, I just felt like it was my baby and I wanted to make sure it all went from you know, beginning to to end uh, without a hitch. Um, And this should happen with all new shifts and new caregivers to any of these shifts. This is your last chance to go over any of the plan of care one last time before walking into your client's home, uh, new client's home. Review (laughs) with the caregiver outside, but remember they are probably watching you. (laughs) Mm -hmm. I wanted to put like a little eyeball looking through a window (laughs) or something. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> you and the caregiver should walk in together. Usually family is there waiting to greet you both at the door. Uh, this can be a really awkward time. Just imagine if the caregiver had to go it alone. You know, they're just sitting there like, what do I do? I mean, they know the plan of care, but how do you get it to start, right? So this walk in, walk in with a positive and confident attitude. You're in their home because they liked something about you. Your caregiver is counting on your energy to feel comfortable in this new space. Begin a quick overview of Oh, I think I did not. Oh, so I wanted to just cue right here. Uh, Go back to the slide with the assessment. Cue all that etiquette, you know, permission to sit where I'm going to. I think I didn't save it, I guess. Uh, You know, where do I set my bag down? Is that okay? May I set it here? Um, (laughs) You have a question. What if you were also uncomfortable? You've just got to do it. (laughs) You just, and if you signed the client, you know, you, they, they let you back in. So you, you don't like, and Lisa addressed that they, they're letting you back in their home. They like you. There's something about, yeah, yeah. it, it is. There's been, it's, a, it's a difficult, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's tough. You just got to be yourself and remember that you did speak with them. You got them from not knowing them, making just an inquiry call all the way to signing and letting you in their home. To me, that's huge. Um, so you just have to have that confidence that they liked something about you. And um, it's natural, I guess, to be nervous, but you don't need to be because you're you're doing them a service. You're doing a, a great thing for them. And you're like the liaison between them and the caregiver. And you're like, you're like mixing them together now and you're introducing them. And it's a, it's a good, it's a good thing. And I think, but I understand like, being nervous. You could say something like, so, to, you know, we're doing bathing and we're doing this and we're doing that. What would you like her to start on today? You know, that might be right. 
a good way, you know, do you, is it, do you need a shower today or your mom, your, you know, your daughter mentioned that you haven't showered since you've been home from the hospital. Maybe a nice shower would be good today. A lot of people right. don't start with the shower. So, you know, maybe she can get the dishes done and get the laundry started. And then maybe a shower today would be a good idea. You know, right. it's very uncomfortable with the caregiver to suggest these. I mean, some are really good at it, but there are some that are very uncomfortable with that piece. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's, and I understand for it. they don't, it's a new space. But, um, and then you begin the quick overview of why you're there and reiterate you're not, you won't be staying for long, but your intention is to really just to introduce the caregiver. And this is, that's a perfect, perfect time to really, you know, this is, this is your caregiver. She X, Y, Z, she loves to bake. She's the best with dementia. She does this and that. And then ask permission to show the caregiver around. The client is paying for this time. So make it brief at like 20 minutes. Yep. Um, I've been, I've been at starts of care longer when I needed to help with maybe a Hoyer or a transfer situation, but, you know, try to keep it 20 minutes or, or less. Um, make sure everyone is comfortable before you leave. That's something I always like my signature is everyone good here. Are we, everyone's <laughs> comfortable. All right. Then I'm going to bow out, show myself out. And, uh, you know, I'll see, I'll, I'll be back in touch with you. Um, another helpful hint is let the client know you look forward to hearing how the day went and you will be reaching out at the end of the day and make sure you do that. <laughs> Check in with your caregiver. So get feedback. Your caregiver and staffing are really just another lifeline to the client and keeping that client. Um, oops, ask. You want as much? Okay. <laughs> I think I messed up there too, but uh, you want as much information as you can get when you reach out to the caregiver about their day one. But at first, give the caregiver a little love before asking a bunch of questions and let them know that the family really loved her. And you are just so grateful she was able to make the shift. You knew she would just, she would have been a perfect fit and done a great job. You trust her. Ask, you know, did she enjoy the time with the client or family? Did she complete the tasks assigned to her? If not, you know, what does she think the issue was? Was it a time management? Did she think she'll be able to again? Was it an, an objection by the family or the client, you know, and she just kind of had to redirect? Um, did she engage with the client? Did they do something engaging together? Uh, what was her favorite time spent? Did she treat the plan of care with importance? Did they close attention to what was most important to the client and family? Was the plan of care accurate? Is there anything we need to add or change? Anything different than what the family or client told us? Because a lot of times they're on their best behavior when I'm there. But when I leave, caregivers there and they kind of, you know, sometimes can just wild out and do other things that they're not supposed to be doing or you know, that we weren't expecting. Um, can she see her tough self returning ongoing? That's huge. I've had people be like, yeah, I'm never going back. And other people like, I love this person. I am here. Put me in coach, you yeah. know? Yeah. And then um, how do we, how are we on time? Okay. Uh, check in with the client and or family. So get feedback from them too. make it a point to stay connected with this client and or family. Of course you have your team, your staffing is going to talk with them probably a lot more than you do, but make sure that you do stay connected some way. You are their resource. You save them from taking their, what would could have been outside of their comfort zone and gave them a solution. Keep that relationship. You're a rock star. Reach out to the client and her family and ask them how they felt things went on their day one. Did they like the caregiver? Did she complete the tasks assigned her? Were there any, you know, hiccups? Did did they have to redirect? Kind of like the same questions you asked the caregiver, but it just in a different way. Did she engage with the client? Were they happy with that? Did she treat the plan of care with importance and like pay close attention to what was most important to them? Any other feedback? Helpful hint. Check in again in week in one week and then in two. And if all's well. Ask for a positive review and give the family the tools needed to do so. We have a reviews program that we have here um, that we can talk to anyone about all day long, but it's so important to ask for, just like you're asking for the business, ask for the review because people are going to look at your Google business profile and your website to review you no matter where they find you in the planet. They're going to go and review and see what other people said about you. Yeah. Oh, oh that was it. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I'm surprised. Do you want to go through handouts? You want me to? Or I can do yeah. half, can do half. Let's let's split it up. Let's split it up okay, so we can I'll go start. fast. All right. September leave behind. And we're almost done with September, but people have been leaving these. Um, September is fall prevention month. It's also the first month of fall, just to play on words. Just like these socks, our services can help prevent falls. And so you you have these socks, they are individually wrapped. And I believe they're like in a clear plastic. You can poke a hole with a string, tie it around this. It's a great handout. 
people love to play on words with this one. Um, October leave behind. Uh, we have National Case Management Week is October 8th through the 14th. Uh, your heart shows this was their theme for the case management theme, um, keeping the person at the heart of collaborative care. So we're talking about how their heart shows. We have these little stone hearts and we have these stress ball hearts that can go along with that. Um, these stress balls are really a big hit. So I, I would probably lean towards this. They keep them on their desk. You could do this again, Valentine's Day, Heart Month. Um, October Leaf Behind, uh, awareness and prevention starts with you. We have Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Um, so self-check daily, eat healthy, know your family history, get regular checkups, consult your doctor, maintain a regular exercise routine. We can help with healthy meals, exercise, transportation to appointments, find out how. So this is basically talking about how your company can help somebody going through breast cancer. And we have great healing crystal rose um, hearts um, and motivational stress balls for adults. And um, these these bags are really cute, Lisa. I saw these bags. She found these bags on Amazon. It's a really yeah. cute, you know, something pink really ties in with all of this. And you can put these items in the bag, tie this, put this to the bag and off you go. So I love that one. That's great. And we've got all the links for you too, for the handouts and, and everything there. Um, it is time to start. Oh, Lisa, did you have something about this one? No, me. Oh, oh I knew oh. someone said something. <laughs> need to I needed I need we need to do our hands we need to do a hands up for me to send a marketing kit for October oh okay so, so you want yeah, them to raise their hand what do you want or type yes what do you want from them okay so if you are interested in receiving a marketing kit there are some there's some caveats to this you must follow through you must hand them out and you must send us pictures of what you were so creative and put together. So I will send some marketing kits out, but I need you to know that we're going to follow up with you. And so this is for October, Valerie? October or November? For October. October. Yeah, we already sent out some September stuff. So um, those pictures are probably coming uh, at the end of September. We'll reach out. So this is for October. And so um, I, you know, I'll, whatever I can send that is not, like I'm not going to create the, the, creative piece, but um, we'll make sure you have access to create that. But I will send the goodies that go in the bag. So this one, or what's the one before this one? Uh, no, Yeah. Um, so we'll figure out, I'll, I will send out um, maybe a couple of different ones, you know, and we'll let you know if you're chosen. So what you do is you raise your hand or you say yes. And then I'll have the triplets draw a couple of names and uh -huh. wing. Perfect. Awesome. We've got a ton of yeses already. Lots of yeses. <laughs> That's awesome. Right. Okay, perfect. That's all I needed. Thank all you. right. So it is time to start drumming up some interest in your pumpkin decorating contest. You can just start carrying this handout around. You can send a PDF out to everybody that you are going to be doing this. Do they want to participate? How many pumpkins do they want? Um, this is a handout. You guys have the links on the next slide. You can change out what they win. You can change out the phone number. Um, you can even, I believe, change out some of the pictures possibly. Um, so it's time to start getting the interest. You want to get them excited about this. Why? Because you need them to come out into the lobby and see you and pick up their pumpkin. Um, so get them excited about this. What you're going to do is drop off these pumpkins. We be little pumpkins. There's two ways to participate. You can drop off a pumpkin or two. They decorate it. It's very simple right here. They decorate it. They send you a picture. The picture needs to be to you by October 31st. They're not going to carve it. They're going to decorate it. It's so, so easy. And what's the best thing about this? One, you're going to get to see them. Two, you're going to have their cell phone number. <laughs> you're going to be on a texting basis with them. And I cannot tell you how powerful that is. It changes the relationship. It just does. They have a Friday discharge. They get stuck. They need somebody. They're gonna, and you're a text away, and everybody else they have to pick up the phone and call. They're going to text you. So this this is going to help with lots of. It's going to put you in a different level with your referral sources. So you get the pumpkins. They have them at farmers market, pumpkin patches, grocery stores. If you drop off one or two, they're going to decorate. They're going to send it to you. You can also though offer to run an activity in their building. Assisted living. This goes over great. Sniffs it does too. The long term people sometimes will decorate pumpkins. Um, and you're going to run the activity with the activity director and you're going to invite 
the director of nursing or social worker or whoever to come to this activity with you. You're going to play scary music, maybe bring some Halloween cookies, and you are going to help decorate the pumpkins with every, all their people, their residents. Be, make sure you bring the decorations, pumpkins and decorations. You cannot expect that they're going to have all this stuff on hand. This should be fun and easy for them. They shouldn't have to do anything. If you're going to take over this activity, take it over all the way and include the decorations. So this is coming. Start sending this PDF out. Start handing it out. Start letting people know you're going to be coming by with some pumpkins. Um, here are just some, some that have been decorated through the years. Your referral sources will start asking you in September. You can do this next year. Like when September rolls around, are you going to do it again? I want to be a part. I want to do the pumpkin. <laughs> they, they love this. I can't express how much they love this. Rebecca Care with Love. These are her pictures from last year. She shared with so us. Cute. People are asking her this year if she's going to do it again. So it is a big hit. I like how she stuck this with their own sticker to the pumpkins. Perfect. All right. This is another new handout that we've created for you for October. Um, the only thing scarier than Halloween is readmissions. ABC ah. Home Care can help. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> yes, patients receiving home care can have a 60% smaller risk of readmission. And this is where that quote came from. Um, so this is great. You can change out the home care, or, you know, the name of the company and the information down here. Attach it just to a bag of Halloween candy. It doesn't have to be hard or difficult. They, you know, it's nice to tie in something fun to your benefit to them. Your benefit to them is you're going to help them reduce their readmissions. They need to know that. They need to understand that. It may not occur to them that if they have home care, there's a less chance of a readmission happening. So um, this is just a fun, an, an additional, we thought we needed some more stuff for October. Uh, November, home care hospice month, home care and hospice month. Uh, turning your frown upside down. We have a couple different ones, a small symbol to help deal with everyday industry challenges. And then Lisa made this one. This one I think is so cute. Hospice and Home Care Month, a recipe of caring. She wrote her own poems here. <laughs> These are <laughs> Those are originals if you want me to sign them. Yes. You can <laughs> take this to a box of cookies. I mean, I think it's perfect because it's, it's all about a recipe and baking and that kind of thing. I love this. So Hospice and Home Care Month is coming up in November. Um, we also have these little bracelets that you could attach to that handout. They're just very motivational pieces. They're very inexpensive. So that might be something else to attach to it. November, leave behind. These, these stress ball turkeys were a big hit. They're a little more expensive. I think they're like $1.70 a piece. We try to keep everything at a buck. I think they are like a buck seventy. You can put your logo and your phone number oh, on the turkey's butt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what's great about this one is people kept it in their desk drawers. They get it out every November. I would see it sitting there. I'm like, oh my gosh, I brought this to you like three years ago. They love, they love this. Yeah. And then of course you can attach this just around his neck with a string. Don't be a turkey and stress over discharges. We can help you. And this again is driving them to the benefit of your company. What are you doing to help the social worker? Um, there's links here to get order the turkeys and there's a Google link for this handout as well. Um, this poster is something that it's a little, it's 50 bucks. You're not going to do it everywhere, but I would do it maybe one, two places that have referred or you're wanting to get referrals. You can order these posters with your logo on the poster and with some kind of saying on the poster. This one says approved senior network is thankful for all you do at ABC Smith. So you can put whatever you want there, uh, but you want to be thankful to whoever you're dropping the poster off at because that just looks really good. Before you drop it off, you color in the words so that that really stands out. You tell them you can put it in your lobby. You can put it in your break room. It's very therapeutic to be coloring, provide the markers or the crayons or the whatever it is that they're going to need and the pins to pin it up on the wall. I mean, you've got to make it simple or it's just going to sit in somebody's drawer on somebody's desk. So um, this one also went over really well. It is 50 bucks. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's huge. It's a big, big poster. The order link is here. There's a Facebook link if you want to take a look at all the things they have. And then coming soon in December, we're going to have lots of December handouts, but this is something that went really, really well. We have like six or seven drawings. Maybe we will make some more for you guys. Um, in December or yeah, in November, sometime in November, you're going to want to start taking these out to the schools, hundreds of them. And you have the children put their first name, their age, their grade in school, Aww. and a special message 
to a senior and the seniors that's so cute oh you haven't seen this yet I I, I didn't see it (laughs) oh I'm telling you guys like you won't have enough I had somebody last year say okay I had 300 made do you think that's enough and I was like you can try it he's like I went to an assisted living facility and they took 175 of them and by then Mm -hmm. it's too late so get as many of these done as you can um, I used to print them out for the school. Paper can be a difficult thing for schools to afford. It depends on what area you're in. So I just printed them. I think we have six images. I would print maybe two, 300 a school, depending on how big the school is. And it's a great activities. The teachers love it because it's like busy work when some kids get done with something earlier than others. We're very careful that it's not, you know, Christmas tree or Christmas or, you know, we're just, it's just a snowman, a reindeer a gingerbread man. I can't remember all of them, but we're going to be coming out with this soon. You're going to want to start handing these out in November. You're going to want to pick them up the end of November and then start handing them out to SNFs, assisted living to your clients, perhaps if you want the first of December and the whole month of December, this is what you're doing. And people love, 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 love this. They absolutely go crazy over it. So that's so cute. That's coming soon. I think that is the last slide. Yes. So the next mastermind is October 6th. Um, do we have any questions up there? It looks like they're all just yeses, me, me, me. <laughs> I want to yeah. That's it. No questions. Okay. Wonderful. All right. Well, we went over just a couple of minutes. We did pretty good. All right. Dante. Well, happy Friday, everybody. I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks for joining. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.